I'm sorry guys for the delay and shorty presentation I'm going to give you because the system's not working properly. I'll try and make a go of it, but what I wanted to do was talk to you guys about account abstraction. Really, the whole point was to highlight the problem to you guys, TLDR, and showcase a little bit of our journey to solve it and show you a couple of video clips where account abstraction has been helpful in solving the UX issues in Web3. And then at the end, show you a little bit about a toolkit that would help you in integrating account abstraction solutions in your DAP development and wrap up. So I know it doesn't look great with this format, but you have to bear with me. I blame them. <laughs> so what we, when we have a problem in the space when we talk about account abstraction. As you can see, we bring a massive number of users and we give them a way to centralize players. And there is a reason why that is happening. The reason is we tell users, hang on a minute, you are your own bank because we are decentralized. As your own bank, you have to have your own recovery phrase. Don't lose it. And we tell them, don't worry, we've got a nice way to store your asset called hardware wallet. Really, a glorified memory stick that anyone can, can snatch away from us. So what, what, what is the solution then? Where do we stand? Well, in fact, before I even do that, let me take you through, through a use case where you have uh, 200 USDC on Gnosis, and you want to stake that on Klimadao, a carbon offsetting service, which is on Polygon. Now, with this cross-chain service, you would have to go through hoops to be able to do it. It's far too complex. Why? I know this looks terrible, but this is meant to be an on-click action. So it means you have to get, just to show you this, you have to get the USDC and you have to get a bridge. Once you get a bridge, you cross it over to Polygon. Once you cross it over to Polygon, you have to get yourself something like Matic to pay for the gas. Then you have to get the Klima and you will be able to stake it on. I'm trying to, it is just that this laptop is broken. So it is meant to be an actual presentation, not just a standalone slide the way it is. Last. <laughs> Thank you. So, what is meant to be happening is you go and find your USDC to stake. You bridge it. Once you bridge it, then you go and get the Matic. With the Matic, you can pay for the gas. Then the 200 USDC you have, you go to the local DEX and convert it to Klima token. Then you stake. Now, all this would take you about nine signatures, and there is no way in hell we will talk, get about, talk about mass adaption with such a convoluted UX that we have in the Web3 space. So we use account abstraction. And what the heck is account abstraction? Well, it is a smart contract technology that would allow us to do that. We use smart wallet technologies. In fact, we've been using this since 2018 in the Pillar Wallet where we wanted to take advantage of smart contract technologies where we wanted to add spending limits and multiple recovery and so forth and started using smart contract technologies as account abstraction in 2018. Then, it was easy for us to use because gas was cheap, one to two gray on mainnet. Then we had a problem. We had a problem because gas went up to about Oh, no, before I even go to the gas issue, we even had a payment channel, and we still do. Payment channel is where you do not pay gas. It's an off-chain transaction. You can tip someone. If you've got a Discord community, they can tip each other. You do not pay gas, and we even implemented that. Then we came across a problem. 
gas went north of 100 grain. It meant getting a smart toilet was so expensive, you paid a minimum of $50 and the times $200. And when I can get an EOA for free, why the hell would I want to touch your smart wallet and do counter abstraction? It means it was not going to happen, a counter abstraction on mainnet. Then the advent of roll-ups and EVM chains made it happen. Again, there is a dependency on the gas price being low because with the counter abstraction solutions where it is not part of the smart contract is not part of the protocol, you have to deploy a smart wallet for it to be going. And that costs money. Hence, having the roll-ups and the EVM chains help it a lot, and, but we have to remember we are dependent on the gas prices on them being cheap. But this would give us, give us a lot of functionalities, which I will show you. And in this case, then through this experience, we created Ethersport. So what we did is we abstracted away the smart contract technologies from a wallet, the wallet app, and packaged it as an SDK so that anyone can consume it, any DAP can consume it. And we figured out ways of, for DAPs to consume it. They can consume it using um, SDK. They can consume it using a widget we have created, which enables the cross-chain transaction far easier. And we have even created a React library for any DAP developer, even a Web2 DAP developer to use. I will use K, I'll show you those in a minute. So what you would get then with the account abstraction solution, you will get social login, one-click action transactions, and the ability to abstract away the gas payment. And all these features I'm talking about, I will show you a, a couple of video clips. They, those, these features being implemented in real life uh, dApps and applications in the Web3 space, benefiting from the, the, the account abstraction solutions. So now we have this one, so I hope I can get access to the internet. Which one do I click to play the video? Yep, there is a video attached to me. It was tested as a PDS on Windows. Oh man. I'm sorry guys, I was going to show you a video that shows the Klima experience I've told you being used, uh, utilized in an account abstraction solution where the user only signs twice and they don't need to bother about bridging or any other uh, uh, solutions like that. So let me try and see if I can get to this thing. I suppose the next video is not going to play either. I'm really sorry about this, guys. I can't play the videos. And I will just tell you, I will send you the links for the videos maybe at the end. I mean, it is unfortunate that I can't play the videos to you guys. So one of the toolkits that we have is called Transaction Kit. It is a React library that makes it easy for any DAP developer to integrate account abstraction solution to their um, UIs. If you have a React component, you can auto-generate an account abstraction uh, code. And for instance, let's say you have a DAP that needs to add liquidity to a certain liquidity pool and you add the liquidity in terms of you add the USDC and the liquidity pool token and you have to have these steps involved in, in doing this. In, you can literally wrap it around these tags and the code, the Web3 code, the account abstraction code will be generated which is uh, suitable for your um, UI, React UI. So 
you can any Web2 developer or even Web3 developers can easily get on with the account abstraction without breaking a lot of sweat. And again, um, the backward compatibility, uh, if you had seen the video, would have made sense, which this means is if you are developing a DAP, it doesn't mean, oh, because I'm using an account abstraction solution, I have to give up on EOA users, MetaMask users, or et cetera. No. This solution works. Even if you have an EOA, you can combine it. It works with those end. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to show it to you on the video. So that's one aspect I wanted to highlight to you guys. And of course, it would be remiss of me if I don't talk about a little bit about 4337 after talking about account abstraction. And for us, we, uh, considering we've been going since the account abstraction solution we have since 2018, we look at it as account abstraction V1 and account abstraction V2. In V1, the difference is it does everything 4337 does. However, the biggest points are censorship resistance. In the V1, you have these things called relays. Now, anyone can attack or someone can sanction for you to s s screen out certain transactions from those relays, whereas with 4337, it decentralizes that. It would have bundlers, bundlers that can talk to each other. In fact, our team is the one responsible for creating the P2P protocol within bundlers so that when you send a transaction to a specific bundler, it has to relay that to X amount of other bundlers. And if this bundler is taken out for whatever reason, the others will propagate the transaction. So. It is censorship resistant, and it, all, it, is, it, is, it also has redundancy built into it. And the upshot of it is, the more transactions you aggregate in a bundler, you would effectively make each transaction cheaper. So this is one of the biggest advantages of ERC-4337 ERC that we have in this. And our bundler service is called Skanda. And if you guys are uh, involved in a hackathon or quick testing out of things. You can use the testing uh, deployments we have in Gareli, Mumbai, and I think another one as well. You can even download a bundler and run it for yourself. You can run your own bundler service, and that is one of the censorship resistance angles where you can run your own service. And one of the bigger things about the mass adaption we talk about, the ERC4337 and the account abstraction, Without the adaption of EIP-1271 by DAPs, it wouldn't work. DAPs have to deploy EIP-1271. It is a simple change, but not a lot of DAPs do it. If you were to follow this QR code or go to EIP-1271.io, you would see quite a lot of DAPs that do not support EIP-1271. You can click on them and put pressure on them to be able to support this, otherwise, when we talk about Web3 mass adaption, if Web1 was view only, Web2 was interactive, where you have your own um, say in terms of posting messages, videos, etc., Web3 is about ownership. But when you use Web1 and Web2 services, you just say, oh, I'm using, using the web, I'm doing something. You don't really call them Web1, Web2. So for Web3 to be that useful to the average person, it has to go past to being Web3 and it has to be adapted by the players so that it is useful to the everyday person without knowing the technicalities. So please uh, uh, go to 1271.io and put pressure on them. And thank you, and I'm sorry I couldn't play the videos I wanted. And if you want to see more uh, of the links that I have, you can find them in there, and that's my tag. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your time, guys. And if anyone has any question, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. So what's happening with ERC-4337 uh, now? Like, where is account abstraction? Where are we in terms of the process? I, I don't see it being used. Some services are using it. I mean, it's beginning to get used. So in the videos, I really wanted to show you was a, a couple of applications that have implemented account abstraction. Say there is a service called bookmaker.xyz. 
they have implemented a counter abstraction. And when you make a bet, it's a betting service, decentralized betting service. It really feels like you're doing Web2 betting. You just go, select a bet, uh, then place your amount, and that's that. So with ERC4337, even though some aspects of it are still being developed, it is there for teams to use. So it's just optimizing how many transactions do I bundle together because the 4337, what it does is, because of the signature scheme change, you can uh, bundle transactions. Say, 10 of us in here are submitting transactions, different people. You can bundle them together and sign them once. Hence, instead of 10 signatures, you only sign once. You can make a saving in the gas payment. So it is, you would see this happening more and more in the coming months. Thank you. Any more questions? Or? Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for this interesting. Come